Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Um, before that time, that's the physics behind it. Another question. Oh, the actual change. The actual change. I'm just wondering what she gets to about it. Yeah, and of course, for seven years, now, 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 now,
exploring and engaging the world, and you can use it to change the world. Absolutely. Uh, so I found that very interesting. Do you agree and why? I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why I agree is because when you're looking at science in particular, that, that particular quote's related to science, but it applies beyond science to all of the STEM disciplines, mm -hmm. is again, that process that we follow when we're looking at exploring. Mm -hmm. It's about being comfortable with not always having the right answer because that's how you end up with innovation. If people quit every time they encounter a roadblock, then you're not gonna to get to the point of innovation. We wouldn't end up with an iPhone or with Google or other search engines out there. So that's the kind of thing, YouTube even, for example. Mm -hmm. So without the scientific process mm -hmm. and the patterns that we see, then we don't get to those types of innovations. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a student uh, actually trying to do a problem in algebra mm -hmm. and, and they uh, get frustrated with the, the process of doing algebra. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the familiar phrase that I'm sure teachers have heard mm -hmm. a million times, mm -hmm. Why do I need to learn this stuff? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Mathematics. Why does? Why, why do you think a, a young student should be uh, involved with understanding that process? So again, it kind of goes back to the thinking process behind it. Mm -hmm. The algebra. Algebra is relevant in STEM disciplines, absolutely. Yes. A little less relevant in non-STEM disciplines, but that doesn't mean that there aren't mathematical concepts that are relevant beyond uh, STEM disciplines. So, for example, statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, so algebra is important primarily for STEM disciplines, but other disciplines as well. But if you think about something like statistics, you're seeing and encountering statistics all the time in the news, in the media, if there's mm -hmm. a commercial for a weight loss drug, yes. you're seeing those types of statistics. So it's more about being quantitatively literate and understanding the process of math and how we solve a problem, understanding the reasoning behind why we follow these steps, than it is about the algebra itself. Mm -hmm. Again, the algebra itself may be relevant for someone practicing in those disciplines, mm -hmm. but the scientific process, the mathematical processes that you're following, that's much more relevant. Yes, this is the idea Gould was having too. He thought that that mathematics, uh, particularly algebra, could be moved into um, mor moral e examination, how one mm -hmm. uh, organizes moral, their moral life, which is interesting. I, I, you never think about math being used in that way. A it's just a process of logic. Yes. Absolutely, and, that, yeah. and, and you bring up the exact word I was just thinking. Logic is actually what we're talking about here, mm -hmm. is you are applying a series of facts mm -hmm. and your knowledge base mm -hmm. together to come up with a solution mm -hmm. and making sure that you're able to justify how you got from your thoughts, what information you used to get there and applying it to your, your response. Dr. Barrow, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a 10 year old grandson. Oh. Uh, what do you tell him about, uh, about the need to learn this, this, uh, this STEM educational process? So I tell them to take advantage of the opportunities that are around them. The, in terms of the need, again, if you want to grow up to be uh, an informed citizen, if you want to make good decisions, if you want to be able to manage your money wisely, mm -hmm. all of those are in STEM. Mm -hmm. So there's reasons beyond just getting a good education <laughs> and getting a good career to learn STEM. Yes, yes. And, t and tell me about, about the process. I mean, how, how does science, technology, and engineering actually, and math, mm -hmm. equip a student uh, to solve problems? So a lot, about it, a lot of it starts with looking at patterns. Mm -hmm. So if you can identify a pattern and then start to think about some reasons why you're seeing that pattern, mm -hmm then that leads you to some possible explanations. Like compound interest. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that when you're looking and trying to make a decision, for example, about a mortgage or mm -hmm. whether or not your interest rates that you're earning at your bank are going to get you enough money to retire early, yes. those are the types of things. Now, children that are 10 years old probably aren't thinking about retirement at that point <laughs> yeah, in time. Right. But they're thinking more about the music that they're listening to. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about why it is there's a recycling bin out there. Somebody's telling them that they need to be recycling. Why do I need to recycle? Mm -hmm. Well, helping them to understand the difference between renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Those are the types of things that help this, the kids to understand why they need to be learning this and, and how this is important moving forward as they're growing up. What, <laughs> what, uh, what keeps the passion going for STEM, um, uh, Christina? So I, I think that for most people, it's about 
seeing the connections yes. between what's going on in your daily life and what they're learning in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure a good example, think about music, for example. Mm -hmm. I used the example of music a little while ago. Music has patterns. Mm -hmm. It has, uh, the way that you hear it is mm -hmm. about physics. Yes. Uh, there's a little bit of chemistry in there, sure. a whole lot of biology in there. Yeah. And so when you start looking at those connections between the different disciplines, mm. then it makes a big difference. And music is an art. Yes. So that really is how we end up with looking at STEM as not just being isolated by itself, but connected to other disciplines. Mm. There's STEM related in history, there's STEM in English, there's STEM in economics. Yeah. So you can see that there's, and th when you start looking at those connections, that's what keeps the passion alive mm -hmm. because you're able to start looking at those connections. Yeah. When we're teaching students a little bit about anatomy and physiology, for example, mm -hmm. admittedly not everybody takes anatomy and physiology, but if you are taking it, you want to remember it. Most of the time people who are taking it are, are healthcare professionals. Yes. So if you're doing that, you want our healthcare professionals to really know what they're talking about because mm -hmm. your lives are our lives are in their hands. Yes. So we got to make that information relevant. Mm -hmm. That's where the passion comes in. Oh. When an instructor, at, whether it's a K-12 teacher or mm -hmm. college teacher, mm -hmm. sees an example and thinks, oh my goodness, this is how I can help my students understand this concept, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then that passion continues. Yes. And that's how you can spark that passion in the students as well, because they see your energy and they feed off of it. <laughs> I think that's uh, absolutely correct. And as you're saying it, I was, I was remembering the teacher that we were talking about to you mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, uh, and and it's it still amazed uh, amaze me. He started off the class with actually uh, uh, informing us the history of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And he started with, of course, Africa, and he, he mm -hmm. talked about Egypt, and he talked about all the related countries, Greek and Rome. Mm -hmm. And uh, it immediately uh, uh, gave me a sense of ownership mm -hmm. of, the, of the material. I Absolutely. Said, oh, this, this is coming from the continent of Africa. Oh, yes, I, I'm very mm -hmm. excited about that. Yes. And, uh, and he did a lot of things to keep me awake, and one of, one of which was, uh, was he, I remember this, he was talking to us about dissecting lines, mm -hmm. and he wore a, uh, I call it a thug hat, but it's not, a, it's not exactly mm -hmm. a thug hat, and he wore shades, and he wore a grass skirt to class. And I remember, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember what he wore, but I also remember the lesson he was talking about. He was talking about intersecting lines mm -hmm. and lines that do not intersect. Right, I, right, I remember right. this. Mm -hmm after years later because of that impression that he made on, upon me. And I bet you understood the concept a little bit better as absolutely, well. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He, he, was, um, he was amazing mm -hmm. at, at teaching us the basics of, of mathematics. Right. Um, and that's where we're getting to. I mean, uh, tell me about, about the preparation of teachers in order to teach this, uh, the STEM courses. So teaching STEM is challenging in that you have to always be thinking of examples because you never know which example it is is going to spark a student's interest. Yes. Uh, it takes a little bit of trial and error, yes. but what we've been doing for probably the better part of over 25 years is partnering mm -hmm. with the school system. So Prince George's Community College and Prince George's County Public Schools mm -hmm. have been partnering for quite some time on preparing teachers. Yes. So we put them through um, institutes. Those institutes, what they do is provide the teachers not only with a little refresher on some of the content, because sometimes teachers are shifted from one course content area to a different course content area where the needs are. So sometimes they may need a little bit of a refresher on that content. So we do that, but we do so in a way that helps them to develop the lesson plans mm -hmm. and also come up with some of those really innovative examples. Yeah. We had some teachers in a class and in one of our summer institutes that developed little learning uh, manipulatives is what we call them in education that they could then take into the classroom mm -hmm. to spark that interest in the students. So that's a big part of how we educate mm -hmm. the, the teachers, mm -hmm. making sure that they understand not only that they need to understand the content, mm -hmm. but when they have that ownership and they start looking for examples, partnerships can make a huge difference in that, yes, yes. giving them the exposure to industry. For example, mm -hmm. industry partners can come in, show them how the content, whether it's math or English or whatever, mm -hmm. is relevant in that oh, real world yes, setting, yes. in that industry setting, in that career setting. Mm -hmm. They take that back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And when they do that, then the students can see there's a reason why I'm learning this. Mm, yes, yes. And it makes a big difference in that. And so preparing those teachers mm -hmm. becomes really important in that respect. Interesting. Expertise um, is, is, uh, is becoming more and more important. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we get students, um, or better yet, why is it that you think students are, are not gung-ho with this new technology, with the career possibilities, uh, the money that can be made, if you want to talk about that. Um, what can we do to inspire the student to, to get excited about these well, forces? Well, of course, there's always the making sure we have positive role models. Yes. That never hurts to make sure that we have the positive role models. We were at an event uh, last week where Dr. Gates, a world-renowned physicist, yes. came and absolutely inspired and he's been on a show, yeah. the students. Yeah. And what he did is not only show them a little bit about what he did, but how much he absolutely loves what he does. Mm. So that it demystifies that STEM is hard or STEM can't be done, it's not approachable. <laughs> uh, April Erickson, who uh, works for NASA, uh -huh. very brilliant woman, and she did the same thing. She showed how from humble, humble beginnings, mm -hmm. she was able to take something that she was interested in and capitalize on it, yeah. build on it. And that's really all we really need to do with students is to help them understand, make a connection to something that is important to you. Mm -hmm. I, I keep going back to the music example because music is something that kids really appreciate. Sure. Show them how that music, playing a piano, playing an instrument, mm -hmm. even dance, mm -hmm. how there are patterns in that and those patterns are what we resonate with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. And we are needing the ability to analyze uh, uh, deeper. I mean, it's, it's amazing the kind of information that I get across my desk mm -hmm. at home, just managing the, the family's uh, uh, business, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, just how important it is to be able to analyze well and to do comparative analysis, for mm -hmm. example, so that you won't make bad decisions. Just, mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is, what is uh, Prince George's doing about uh, the challenges of meeting this uh, requirement for STEM education in the future? So we do rigorous programming, of course. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that our students are getting the content knowledge yes. and the con conceptual knowledge that's necessary to prepare them for either transfer to a four-year institution, because mm -hmm. our transfer programs are designed to be the first two years of a four-year uh, degree program, mm -hmm. bachelor's degree program. But we also want to make sure we're preparing them for the careers. So there's a couple of different things that we're doing. One, of course, is great partnerships with our school system, mm -hmm. with our transfer institutions, and with industry. Yeah. So when we're looking at that, you can look at something like a Youth Career Connect program. And what that mm -hmm. does is it helps take students that are interested in STEM mm -hmm. or health sciences, particularly IT and cybersecurity and health science disciplines. It gives them an opportunity to experience those disciplines in the workforce, mm -hmm. but it also helps them to get credentials. Mm -hmm. So we, we are a part of that Youth Career Connect program. We're in there with Bowie State, we're in there with Lockheed Martin, we're in there with the school system, the Economic Development Corporation, wow. all of us working together to mm -hmm. make sure that those students not only have the academic preparation, but the experiences mm -hmm. necessary to spark that passion yes, that we've talked yes. about a couple of times and then also be prepared to actually practice in those disciplines. Mm -hmm. what get, what, why are you excited about uh, the STEM? <laughs> just, just, just uh, I, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a, always a good question. I think, <laughs> like I said, what always inspires me about STEM is exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, from being a very young child, uh, where I was, uh, grew up in a military family, so we were always moving around. Mm -hmm that just provides an opportunity to explore your surroundings. Uh -huh. And when you explore your surroundings, then you start looking for opportunities to change things, do things a little differently. That's interesting. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Dr. Um, Avery uh, uh, Tolls. He's mm -hmm. uh, at Howard, mm -hmm. and uh, his area is education. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking about his own personal experience uh, uh, in, from high school, how it is that he sort of found himself in the intellectual desert uh, right. where they were not teaching calculus mm -hmm. that would prepare him to go to college. Right. And he had to basically get a, a, a find a, the, the good graces of a teacher to just take the time and tutor him through, mm -hmm. through this course. Actually, they, they developed the course because 
he showed mm -hmm. potential to go to college to, right. to teach calculus to him. Is that a, um, a, re a, 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 a national problem where there are these zip codes and, and, and communities that d do not seem to be getting the primary primary building blocks of, of algebra, or geometry, and, and calculus, biology, chemistry? So it does happen in pockets, and certainly you could associate some of those pockets with zip codes. I, I would not be surprised about that. Mm -hmm. I think what it does is, again, going back to our partnerships uh, piece, when those challenges are identified, creating an appropriate partnership, whether it's with the school system, mm -hmm. whether it's with a local higher education institution, those are the kinds of things that can help a student to continue to advance. And that's actually very important for students, whether they're in STEM disciplines or not, is to always challenge themselves. If you only take the easy courses, as soon as you hit a challenge, you're not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So if you're always challenging yourself, then you develop the strategies necessary to succeed. In the workforce, you're going to encounter some sort of a challenge, mm -hmm. and you need to know how to be able to handle that challenge. Mm -hmm you're going to encounter things that aren't comfortable. And so that's why I think it's very important for students to take those challenging courses. Mm -hmm. If they're not available in their school, mm -hmm. look for other opportunities. We live in a technological age, yes. and YouTube, for all its many great things, uh, provides a great opportunity for you to learn concepts. Mm. So you could reach out. I'm going to give an example of somebody who wants to learn a little bit more about calculus. Reach out to a college professor. Maybe the college is 500 miles away from you. But you can email that college professor and say, could you send me a syllabus for calculus? Mm -hmm. right, that instructor could send you a, a syllabus for calculus, and that syllabus will have a list of the different topics that you're going to learn. Look on YouTube, and I can pretty much guarantee you that there will be a tutorial on how to understand that. <laughs> then a quick search yes. will show some sample problems on that same topic work through those sample problems, and in some cases, there'll be answers available for you to check to find out if you've done it correctly. So that's how you can prepare yourself so that when you do have access to that course mm -hmm. or to a, an opportunity to take a placement test yes. or SAT, ACT, yes. those types of things, you have set okay. or exceeded the bar that has been set for that. So you, you actually have given us a solution for inequity and in, in how uh, these, you know, these desert, intellectual deserts can be yeah. overcome by using right. the computer and using the technology uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get around that yeah. or to if you were that. A little closer to home, so mm -hmm. for our county in particular, yeah. uh, dual enrollment provides a lot of opportunities. Explain what that is. Then. Dual enrollment is an opportunity for students to earn college credit mm -hmm. while they're still in high school. Uh -huh. And depending on the courses that they're taking, those college courses taught by college faculty mm -hmm. can actually satisfy high school graduation requirements. Mm -hmm. So the, the new state legislation within the last couple of years says that students need to take four years of math. Mm -hmm. So if the school, and most of our schools have access to all the way up through calculus, but if the school doesn't have that access, you could take that at the community college or at a four-year institution where there's a dual enrollment agreement. So that not only gives you an opportunity to continue to challenge yourself, but it also gives you an opportunity to earn a college transcript while you're still in high school. Mm. We've done quite a bit of that in recent years with our Academy of Health Sciences and with our Information Technology Early College. Mm. Those are programs that not only by the time they finish with their high school, four years of high school, they've got a high school diploma, mm. but they've also got an associate degree, a full college degree when they graduate with wow. um, after four years of high school. Yes, that's skipping mm -hmm. over a lot of time. That's a and lot resources. of time, a lot of money saved, mm -hmm. and again, you're s distinguishing yourself from the hundreds or thousands of other students mm -hmm. out there that are entering the workforce or entering a transfer institution. Mm -hmm. there, the, our, the transfer institutions are clamoring for our students. Mm -hmm. Over eight million in scholarships in the first year of the program, over 18 million in the second year of the program. Mm. Lots of folks look for these students and they're going to the Yales and the Penn States and um, and they're going around the corner to the University of Maryland's, yeah. the UMBC's as well. So. Wow, well, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> so that's how we can address that equity issue. That's exactly <laughs> right. And, uh, so tell me about the parents. What should the parents be doing uh, to prepare their this, this students for this new uh, frontier? So making sure that the students read mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah. 
uh, encouraging them to take advantage of opportunities, experiences out there, whether it's an after-school program, a summer program, any of those types of things, they can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Talking to the teacher and the guidance counselor. Those teachers and guidance counselors are there to help our students succeed and be prepared for the next step. Making sure you've got a good rapport with those folks so that they are there, they know that you are an involved parent as well mm -hmm. can make a big difference. Tell me what is the what is the standard should should students because what I what I find happening uh, is even in the analysis of the uh, of the White House on, uh, in the Department of Education, they tend to break things down under racial concerns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 91 percent of Asians and high school students and 71 percent white high school students uh, attend high school where there's a full range of these courses that we've been mm -hmm. talking about. Um, I sometimes wonder uh, whether that is a global picture whether there, I don't even know if the data is available, but but uh, but but it seems to me that we're going to be competing against people that are not living in America and right. as uh, for not only knowledge but also for jobs. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, is is that a, a reasonable um, way of looking at it, or or is it it's wishful thinking? So I don't, I wouldn't say it's wishful thinking. What I would say is that when you're looking at something like that. Focus on what you can do proactively to address that. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of statistics and data out there to show where the United States ranks in the, in the world mm -hmm. as, uh, as it relates to yeah. science or math yeah, or, so or those, those types of things. It, they mm -hmm. have it on the, online. Mm -hmm. it was, I was really shocked when I saw some of the numbers. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, it's, it was like 50th or 29th in math and science? It's, it's usually in the 20th right uh, recently. Yeah. But those gaps are actually changing. Yeah, and one of the reasons why they're changing is mm -hmm. because we're doing so much more to prepare our teachers. Mm -hmm. it's, we were doing, we we're setting aside the funding to do research on how students learn. Mm -hmm. We're setting aside the funding to offer those students opportunities mm -hmm. and experiences that can again make that information relevant. When it's mm -hmm. relevant, then they want to learn it. When they want to learn it, they're much more likely to remember it long enough to do well mm -hmm. uh, beyond mm -hmm. the classroom. Yeah, beyond the, ca the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a tech, there is a, a technical apparatus to to learning a course, and uh, mm -hmm. and you want you want parents and students to be uh, aware of that. Absolutely. Um, it seems to me that uh, that we have to quickly uh, uh, close the gap because the President Obama speaks about it uh, almost at every yes. every uh, opportunity. Opportunity. Tell me, what resources do you think that parents right now can access that will get them get their student on on the right course? Like tonight, what can we do tonight? So, starting with uh, a school systems website. Mm -hmm. School systems websites usually have all kinds of information about the programs that they offer. Mm -hmm. uh, one particular key stage in the system mm -hmm. is the eighth grade year. Mm -hmm. Because in the eighth grade year, parents and students are deciding what programs they're going to go into in high school. What is it they want to do? That's the first step toward figuring out what you want to do for college or mm -hmm. for a career. Yeah. So knowing what programs are out there can make a big difference. That's what the resources available on a, a school systems website can do for you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Dr. Farrell, thank you so much mm -hmm. for helping us here on the Scholars Chair. You've been quite informative. Thank you. And I think if you take the time and and get to the websites that Dr. Farrell has recommended that you will be able to advance yourself much quicker. And, uh, and we want nothing but the very best for our students in Prince George's County. Tonight, we have been talking to Dr. Christine Burrow, Dean of the Division of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, and she's working at Prince George's Community College um, concerning the benefit of STEM education. You can see more of the Scholars Chair program on readonecommunication.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I am Khalil Shadid. Good night.
amazing. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you.